well, the mask mandates are an irritation, but understandable indoors. But um, and I suppose, as you know, probably you, Sarah, are also affected by the this sort of two month staff transition period to full time, in, you know, back back to pre pandemic norms. Um, I expect by the end of September, we're going to you know see whether all this vaccination and so forth is going to mean the campus stays pretty safe uh, or we suddenly uh, you know, are our own little version of the movie Contagion. I think we'll be pretty good. I'm just, it's, I mean, with those vaccination rates and unless we get, uh, no, I mean, they're gonna go up as kids party. They're gonna go up after this weekend. But um, hopefully, as long as we can keep the faculty and grads with long, young kids at home safe. Yeah. So, and I know it's going to be challenging for the faculty to lecture with masks on. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. Me too. Hey, Judy. All right. Looks like we have everyone. And we're not really, there's nothing else on our agenda for tonight besides floodplain and minutes. Unless somebody snuck a unanticipated item on well, Don wants to talk about the setbacks on commercial industrial. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Where is Mary? She disappeared. <clears throat> oh yeah. Here today. Yeah, maybe we good. should maybe should we should start with one of the other agenda items then. As opposed, other than minutes, but it wasn't well stated. Well, she's got your marked up minutes already, right, Judy? She's back. Yep. Is she? Oh. She's getting there. Get there. Get there. Hi, Mary. I'm back. <laughs> I missed whatever anybody said. I hit the wrong button. Been there. You, you covered. Just that we're lost without you, Mary. <laughs> well, I know that there was something about discussing solar on the agenda as well as minutes and uh, floodplain. Did you guys just dispose of that? No, we no. just wondered, we just lamented that you were not with us and what would we do without you? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when in danger, when in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. <laughs> Okay, do you want to go ahead and do the minutes first? Let's add it first on the agenda. So, where's my agenda here? Okay, we didn't put them in evidently. So, uh, the oldest ones are what? March? Let's do them in March. chronological order. April 13th, yeah, March 16th is the first the oldest one, and then there's April 13th and May 25th. These are not all that there are, but they're what's here tonight. <laughs> and I'm yeah, sorry. I was wondering, I, so we didn't quite go by date because there's a February 23rd. Right, I looked okay. at what was available and I went with what looked like it could be dealt with most expeditiously to make a deadline. <laughs> and some of them were not, some of them were a lot longer. And as I get into them, there were, you know, things that I was going to have to look up or, you know, questions. And eh. so I said, okay. in order to get it done, that's my criteria. <laughs> Thank you. If that's your story. You can stick to it. I, I would like to, as we get into this, sort of stake out a, a uh, position or recommendation that when we've got final minutes for any given meeting, a document appears with, you know, minutes and final in the appropriate folder in the OneDrive under the meetings tree. Um, and I'm happy, I did, you know, we can come back to this later, but given that there are no publicly posted minutes beyond, I think, early 2020, much less 2021, I'm happy if someone guides me 
who I should work with on the town side to get final minutes posted. That's not necessary, Brant. That's my fault. We have some that I have not submitted to them because when people approve them here, which was a few months ago, uh, every one of them had amendments of some sort and I started working through them and some of that involved looking things up. I would have gotten back to it, but I lost track of it. Okay. The fact that it was still undone. And in the meantime, that's when COVID picked up and we had all those ZBA and planning board applications and mailings and all of that. And I have returned to that. And that's where we're doing, that's why we have March 16th, March and April. And and May here. Um, I also have the ones from 20. Well, yes, I returned to that. And I thought I was going to have them to mail out to Amy uh, yesterday or today, but that hasn't happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've got a couple of them already done. I can stick them in the mail for them tomorrow. Okay. And But I, I think know once I get them, Amy puts them right up. I think there's a batch that you've already sent that isn't up and I don't know. I um, Well, I sent it to the planning board, but I don't think I sent it to them yet because I hadn't taken care of the amendments. And that's- Well, no, I mean, the ones we approved one. last fall, I think I think you told us last fall that, that you had sent a bunch to Lynn and somehow they didn't get up. Anyway, both Don and I can post on the planning board website. So if, but well, I don't remember getting too many final documents either, so. No, there weren't many. Uh, 2020 <laughs> with all that went on just kind of fell apart as far as minutes goes. I have more that I have, uh, that you approved in the spring that I can send to them to post, but I think there are four 2020 minutes that haven't been written yet. I still have to catch up with those. Well, See? send them whatever you have. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't that, wait till it, send them whenever you get them and don't wait till you've got a full complete set. <laughs> and would it help if we gave you another deadline? I think we all manage, we well, all manage. Do not argue against that. <laughs> Deadlines can be good motivators because, you know, everything else I get has a deadline built in. Yeah. <laughs> all the mailings and advertisements and postings and all of that, they all have deadlines. And all, even well, the minutes are overdue when their deadline has actually passed. <laughs> it's, well, it's, would you so think what would, a, what would be a good goal for the September meeting? Sorry, motorcycle going by. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you say, Tom? What would be a good goal for the September meeting? How many? How many? Uh, focus on the cleanup of the back ones. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. I um. That's what I figured was to get the start with the back ones. So, is it realistic to think we can get the 2020s reviewed for the next meeting? There are four of them. Let's see. For a, I will agree to that as our target. Okay. I'll say it's realistic. I, they're all long minutes and they may be more complicated, but for, you know, I should be able to do it. Um, we haven't got another wave of applications from for the planning board or the zoning board yet. We've got people for, for next month, you know, the day after tomorrow for zoning, but. Um, well, Mary, I think make a, I'd, I'd like to, to ask a question of the planning board, would it be more useful, you think, to have her finalize the ones where we've approved the amendments and get, which I think would mean getting more up on the website. Well, that, that's what I was hoping first. to do. That, that, I think that makes sense. Do those They're first all and then as many of the four that are missing as she can in, in that order. I, what does the planning board think? I don't know what you would rather have. I, I agree with you, Mary, Judy. Yeah, I agree with that. So my, my feeling is that maybe, Mary, if you run into problems, 
send out an email to all of us and, and maybe we can help you look up stuff that you can't find. Right. Okay, I, I will do that before I finish it and send it out as a draft with blank spots. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you about it as soon as I run into something and say, does anybody have Good. a copy of this or what's the section sure. the laws here? I'll do it that way. Try okay. to keep up with it as I go. I do have a question partly to Mary and maybe partly to Sarah. Zoom, I think, I don't know whether our Zoom is configured this way, but it does uh, have a feature that just generates an, a, an audio transcript of recorded meetings, which can be incredibly helpful. I mean, they're, they're not error free, but are we getting those in our recording, Sarah? That that could help Mary accelerate the process of generating the minutes. I have definitely seen people do that, Brant. Where is, do you remember where I've seen people yeah. struggle? Well, we would maybe after this meeting, if we hang on for a couple of minutes, we just log into Zoom with the planning, with whatever account we use, and we look up where the cloud recordings are. It is possible that somebody did not check the right box to enable the, in which case we're lost, you know, and, and we should just make sure we check it going forward to help Mary in the future. Can she but, start checking it now or is it too late? Uh, it may be too late for a meeting that's in progress. Okay. We, I have we, seen it kick in in the middle of a meeting at UMass, but their settings may be different also. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it doing the cloud recording, not... Um, this this meeting, it won't matter so much anyway. Right. Yeah. I guess it can be very pro forma minutes. I kind of yeah. missed the point of it, Brant. What is it that kicks in when so you... So it's what Zoom can do. Since I think the 2020 meetings were recorded on Zoom, am I correct? Yes. Uh, and of course, we've been doing all of these on Zoom in 2021. Zoom has the capability to generate a audio transcript, an actual file that has a word for word transcription automatically generated of everything that was said during the meeting. It will have errors, but often you can read through it and get the gist edit it down. You mean, well, you said audio file. Are you saying it? No, 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 no. I don't mean a, you it play puts back it the, the transcript. It transcribes oh, okay. the audio into written text. It's actually really, really good for large group meetings when you have people with varying levels of hearing or comprehension. Right. It's written right on the bottom of the screen. Well, it's really good. Having it in print would be very good. Yeah. It really does not always transcribe correctly, particularly with very technical words. It's Neither does actually the quite amusing. Guess, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. right. Some of the Polish names could be a problem. <laughs> you should see closed captioning for the Red Sox games if you want to oh. see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should find that, Brad. Yeah, that, that sounds useful. All right. Well, we'll, Sarah and I will look into that before tonight is out. I my, my own intuition for what little it's worth is that I'm sort of of the mind like, yeah, we should fill, fix 2020 and maybe Judy will correct me because this is really more of a matter of law, but I'd almost rather try to get 2021 done. <laughs> and the worst case is 2020 is a lost year. I mean, we will, we, I'm sure we eventually get the minute. So I would prioritize, I personally would prioritize 2021 before I worry about 2020, but that's just me. That's kind of a good point, Brad, because I nobody has uh, done any bitching and whining about not being able to find those. And I think 2020, 2020 is 2021 useful for is us. Still fresher in pieces in people's minds. It might be. Yeah, able, I mean, I'd kind you know, of, I would recommend to Mary to go, like, work from January forward because, I mean, even the minutes you shared, like, and Judy made some markups, my own memory is as time goes on, gets cloudier and cloudier. I so know. I'm, it's going to be hard for me to offer corrections more than a month or two back. One, one caveat, since you mentioned the law, the public meeting law requires minutes be posted within 90 days of the meeting. 
um, whether draft wow. or final. Um, so I don't know. Wow. And I really, some of the, I think what you say still holds. Nobody's, we were so, so much in violation now, it probably doesn't matter. Well, here's an, so given that you brought that up, Judy, uh, you, that was really helpful to me. If it's draft or final, why can't we have Mary do de minimis draft minutes for all the missing meetings in 2020? And de minimis could literally be the date, the attendees, um, you know, talked about this, you know, like one line for the agenda topics done, post those, and then later on we can post final ones. Does that meet open meeting uh, requirements? Well, there are already so much in violation. I don't think a few more months are going to matter. So if that's going to take time. And if they do go up like that, it might be more questioned than <laughs> yeah. the blank has been. <laughs> I think what she might start doing is, well, no. We just got to work on getting. Yeah getting this cleaned up so what would, we like, suggest what would we like as a goal for the next meeting yeah well but i, I catch up I, on i'll give you a here's a concrete goal i would like to see a spreadsheet simple spreadsheet with meeting dates and status of the minutes okay you know for 2021 and i guess for all the missing dates in 2020 because i'm having trouble even with our discussion tonight of keeping track of where we are. And I'm inferring from Mary that different dates, even in 2021 are, I mean, she isn't working systematically either from oldest to newest or newest to oldest. She's kind of picking and choosing. I used to always work new, oldest to right. newest, but right. then I ran into blockages. I said, I better get to something I can do yeah. faster than this. The so first goal is by our next meeting, let's have a clear tracking spreadsheet. If that should take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like date, you know, just like date status, you know, like draft, final, whatever, you know, pick a word or phrase for status. Boom, boom, boom. So draft, I mean, draft uh, approved, amended approved is what I use when I said final this, document. Yeah. There's, there's a third step in there. Yeah. Mary, do you have a spreadsheet? Yeah. Program that you use? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, I can send that. That won't be a problem. Good. And because what I can't, I mean, in some sense, what I'd like to say for the next meeting is the spreadsheet plus at least draft minutes approved for every 2021 meeting. Draft. I mean, I, 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 I you mean the one, in my you ideal want, world, I'd say final, but. You want drafts so, to approve. So yeah. how many, how many is that, Mary? How many, how many minutes, sets of minutes is that? Uh, hold on just a moment. I mean, like, you, I just want to be realistic. One, two, three. Yeah, all of them. So well, there have been 12 meetings in 2021, 12 planning board meetings in 2021. Let's say there are 12 folders, including today. Let me just pull up what I've got here. And I can tell you while Mary's doing this, like I dip into the January 26th folder, I find draft minutes. So that's one. I draft, look into December, February 9th, I find draft minutes, that's two. I look in February 23rd, I do not see any, any minutes at all. Right, I've got, uh, got the list up here. Right. We just got six, March 16th, March 30th. I am not seeing any minutes. April 13th, draft minutes. April 27th, no minutes. May 11th, no minutes. 
May 25th, draft minutes, June 29th, no minutes. Six of those in 2020 you have approved, but I haven't done the amendments and sent them. I see, that's 2020. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh are you talking about? Right. Yeah, you... well, it's fine. Those, that's relevant information too. Okay. Um, that's what I went into. I thought that's what you were. So far for of the 12 meetings we've had in 2021, looking into the OneDrive folders, I'm only seeing five doc, five draft minutes, five meetings with draft minutes. So that leaves seven without any draft minutes. So is it realistic to think by the next meeting, Mary, you could have those five ready to go for approval? Five. Plus the spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah, so what I just said to reconfirm what Tom is saying, we yeah. have five draft minutes yes. in the folders in 2021 and seven no minutes. Right. So, and remember, you're going to send us every every blank you have or every question. You're going to send it to us rather than digging in yourself. Okay. Is that realistic, Mary, to get those five and then move on to the seven that there are any? Uh, I, I will... I'll say yes, just things come up, but they <laughs> kind of, yes, if, if I find questions that are stumbling me, I'll, I won't spend time doing that. I'll see if anyone else knows faster. So uh, the spreadsheet and, fi and five sets of- Final minutes. No, draft of the missing ones. So draft minutes for you to approve at the second. Right. Uh, now, so there are, that was the confusing part. So yeah, okay. There five, are five, five draft minutes and seven no minutes. So what are we talking about? The five draft minutes, two of which you approved back with the last four of the 2020 minutes. Those are part of the doing amendments and sending them to Amy. Okay. Okay. The five, the, the other three of the five are the March 16th, okay. April 13th, and May 25th, which okay. are you have now, and the rest of them have not been written yet. Okay. So we're going to put those five to rest at the next meeting. Yes. Well, these two of them are, yeah, uh, that's correct. Regardless yes, of the yes, status. Well, of right, the that's right. We're talking just about 20. 21. We've got five minutes that are outstanding that have been written as drafts. Two have been approved, but not amended and sent. Three have not been approved yet, but you have them. We can tie up all of that. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's, if you're going to approve minutes tonight that I can just amend also. <laughs> um, That's the goal. The, yeah. okay, we just well, get started on doing it. And then, so then we're talking about having those maybe done tonight as far as just needing amendments, those five. And then the other seven, you said, Brent, was the number. That's what yeah. needs to be written and sent to you to approve on September at the end of the month. Right. Send seven unwritten minutes. I mean, that is a pretty tall order, finishing yeah, the five. That, that, it is. They're, like I said, I did the easy ones tonight, but yeah. <laughs> or the shorter ones. Or but maybe some progress on the seven, like yeah, even. I, yeah. I remember once uh, years ago, <laughs> Roger said to me, uh, could you just write less? I said, oh, writing less takes much longer. <laughs> you can't compress it all and miss nothing. And <laughs> well, you know, once we've amended a draft and I can just, and, and it's approved, I can just accept the changes we made and we can post it as a draft and then you can get it in final form. We could do that for 2021. Oh, okay. I'd rather post the amended draft. I'd rather get the, something up there. Yeah, I'd oh. rather post the amended oh. draft. because Post the version I'm, that was approved with the draft showing the changes. Post that. Well, I'd rather not show the, I'd rather not show the actual change. I'd rather just 
show it in kind of a rough form. Some of this gets into potential legal issues. And if, right. if I'd rather not show, well, you know, 99% of it is just clarity and, I didn't quite understand what you intended. What no, well, meaning. once we approve it, I can send you a version where, where I just go through, well, you could do it too. If you still don't have word, right. You're, you're working with the. Oh, I've, I've been using a free one. That's yeah. <laughs> that's well, I can go through thing. and accept the changes. What we ought to do is pay for you to get word. That would make life so much easier. No, I had word. It was just now you have to renew, you know, they make you pay every year for it and stuff. Actually, if she could probably. Is it, what is it that can't happen with the one that I have? Can you, can you just say accept changes? Where I, had, you I have, have no idea. I just never tried, you know, had any reason to try to use it. Because, because. Because when I cross something out and add it with Word, you just say, accept change, and it makes the edit for you. You don't have to retype yeah. anything. Why don't I see if I can do that? <laughs> I don't think with a freebie you can, but but maybe. Um, Probably not, but I'll give it a whack. And she should be able to use, given that we have, uh, I'll have, let me check whether she could use the Word uh, through the browser that's part of um, the Office 360 subscription that either the town has and or the planning board has. So she doesn't have to get and install a new application. Yeah. So what you're saying is that I should, you know, the, the, the draft that I submit to the board will be approved with the edits that the board votes on. And then it'll be sitting in OneDrive with the amendments, and I might be able to grab that and do a and accept changes on that, or or on or or read. <laughs> I mean, if I just what I've been doing is typing, you know, substituting it in my own copy so that all that. Yeah, happens. no, I understand. But uh, well, Mary, and you're easier, having to do a lot what of would be easier for you to move this wall. I'm sorry, <laughs> separately, please. <laughs> I all right, let's like... let's just let's just get moving and worry about the timelines and be later. Let's just start looking at, at the agenda or the minutes and approving them now. Okay. Because we're we're just going in circles at this point. We've said the same thing four times. Okay, so you're starting with March 16th? Yep. Yeah. And so with March 16th, Judy did a review with markup. I went through that. I was not at the, I was absent for March 16th. So really all I did was made a few other little editorial fixes in the document. Okay. Um, I mean, and honestly, since I've got the document open in OneDrive, if we just approve it tonight, or if anyone else just opens it from OneDrive out of the meeting, uh, the folder for the March 16th meeting, we can look at it together, approve it, and I can save it back to OneDrive, accepting all of the markup as Judy suggested, and give it a new file name with the word approved, for example, so that a new document, new minutes document would be redeposited back in the OneDrive folder with the word approved in it. And that would be, I mean, then wouldn't, I don't know what else Mary would have to do at that point. Well, often she has to add details to attachments or um, given the way her word processor system works, she winds up doing a lot of reformatting too, I think. But. Hmm. That's, that's not the fault of the freebie. That's, <laughs> it was just as bad with word I was always doing. 
things would jump around. It just seems to do it a little more now. Okay. Um, so 316. Well, as long as the formatting is clear on what Brant is talking about doing. Yeah. You get the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think. If I'm I mean, asking the board for information, maybe I don't have to do more details. I mean, it's just, details would include looking up plans electronically now instead of on a piece of paper to find the date and the title of everything. Right. I've been doing that. Um, it's little things like people's names or other stuff. And if I'm going to be asking people about that ahead of time, we ought to get that ironed out before we're sitting down for the approval process, maybe, or, or at yeah. the approval process. We'll work it out. Okay. But at this point, I'm, I'm going to do a spreadsheet for what's still missing with the status and uh, dates, uh, clear up the five drafts that still have amendments to be made and send them to Amy. Uh, do as much as I can or about writing the seven sets of unwritten minutes for 2021. And we're discussing this other thing about uh, accepting minutes, or accepting changes. So why don't we just, as a case in point, look at the March 16th minutes. Okay. With the markups added by Judy and a few by me. I mean, honestly, again, I'm not, I don't know the protocols around this, but I can't imagine, unless anyone has any concerns with the markup that Judy added, which had some substance to it, and mine, which was like fixing little editorial things and had added no other value. We could just, I don't know why these minutes couldn't just be reviewed and approved with no further revision needed by Mary. Fine by me. I mean, I've already read them over. I'm there. I came into the meeting and read these already and agree with them. So I'm ready to move a motion to approve. Almost, I don't have any problem with what, what um, Judy amended. Okay. Do we have a second? I will second that. Okay. I don't have any comments. Does anyone else have any comments? Okay. We'll call the roll. Sarah? Don, yes. Tom? Yes. Brent? Yes. Judy? Yes. Okay, the motion to approve the minutes of 316-2021 passes unanimously. All right, so I'm doing, uh, I've done an accept all changes and stop tracking on the document. And then I'm, the going, draft off. I'm going to save it in a new file. Did you, did you? Remove the word draft at the top. Uh, I'm about to do that in the file name. I'm going to call yep. this what approved. What I'm looking at still looks like the corrections copy that I saw before. Is well, now you should not be looking at that. You should close that document and in OneDrive now, in the OneDrive folder for March 16th. <laughs> That's where I am. In the <laughs> Oh, the, I'm sorry. I didn't open the one that said approved. Yes, there's a yeah. thing in there now. It's, yes. it's in there. Yeah, I'm opening up the approved version. And yeah, this all looks clean. Good, yeah, it works. Looks, looks very clean. I mean, I'm not reading it actually, but I'm just saying it. There are no colorful collect connections or mashed up formatting anymore. That's it's it must have done what you said. So that's okay. Good. How about April 13th? Let's look at April 13th. All right. I think this year we're just reorganization and because as usual our discussion rambled a bit. So I think it would made more sense just to with the project things, with the project things and the, the reasons for not waiving with the reasons for not waiving. 
reasons for waiving and the reasons for wait, wait. so we're looking at April 13th. So this is what are you speaking to, Judy? Part two on the town water pump project. Yeah, the first the, the deletions at the beginning of at the top of part two. I moved down below. Okay. Sorry, I, I was looking at simple it. markup, not all markup. I see. So, so um, that's all. It the substance of it is the same. It's just that our discussion kind of conflated why we might be waving and what the project looked like. And I thought it would be easier for everybody if if the minutes didn't look like that. Mary captured it the way we said it, but as usual, we weren't as organized as we might have been. You want a motion? Don, you want a motion? Um, I'm just looking it over a little bit, yeah. Yeah, motion to approve um, subject to Judy's organizational changes. Second that. Okay, any discussion? I think it's clear, it's the revisions make it clear and understandable. Uh, but it is, that is the right spelling of Wayne's last name? Yes, there is no W. Okay. Hudkowski, yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, call the roll, Sarah. You can add nod. Hi. Don, yes, Tom. Hi. Brent? Yes. Judy? Yes. Draft the minutes of 4.13.21 as amended have been voted unanimously. All right, I'm gonna do my usual trick here of saving it with the word approved. 4.13. Four thirteen twenty twenty one. Move that. Move the word draft at the top. Right. So I think the formatting is good to go. Mary can confirm. It's in the OneDrive folder. Okay, I've got May 25th as the next one, is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. For what it's worth, I did, I was curious about the spelling of uh, various virtual guests' names. I, you know, I, I know this is sort of a best effort basis. I was wondering whether it's Chris Carney, like K-E-A-R-N-E-Y. Does this really matter? I, I believe, no, his, his I believe is, I know there's like three or four different ways to spell it, but I, I can check his email. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did that back when I was writing it and he is K-A-R-N-E-Y. Okay, and I'm sure if we look in the address, in the folder associated with the address, his name appears on the documents, right? He's the engineer. Well, right? I don't, not, <laughs> I looked through the application full of stuff um, oh. and it seemed, I didn't find his name there. It's also often on other, I mean, I guess they don't always have the engineer sign the actual application with the, narrative and the plans and all of that stuff. Uh, I expected to find it there too, but I finally just went to one of his emails and took it off that. Okay. Okay, the only thing that I saw was on uh, section five public hearing. I'm showing three dots to the right of IV. Oh, hold on. I don't fix that. I just fixed that. Item four, right? Yeah, item four. Oh, yeah. I just fixed that in my version that'll get updated when we 
and I can probably take two seconds and clean up some of the um, indenting stuff. Judy had a question about whether it was Don or Wayne that re replied affirmatively, and it seems like it should have been Wayne, not Don. You know, I, I, I asked and Wayne replied. Yeah, that's, what, that's the way I remembered it. So that should be Wayne. Okay, maybe I had Don's name next to that note, but maybe Don, Don posed the question. He, he asked and Wayne replied. Okay. Okay. So I fixed I kind that of wondered anyway. about that. I said, gee, gee, uh, Don must remember from having read over this stuff <laughs> that that's what it is because <laughs> it didn't, uh, I don't know. Okay, and on my copy, further down under points one and two, uh, I've got trench and a bunch of other stuff off to the left rather than lining mm -hmm. up with it. The... Well, that's a, that's the formatting one because she, gotcha. she, she, doesn't set it up with paragraphs and indents. So that's the kind of thing where when yep. I make a change, it follows up her formatting. Okay. Okay, I was going to say the, 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 the one of my draft that I printed for myself looks fine, but I, yeah. have, well, I haven't seen it. What You're, happens, you, Mary, is you space all the way over to yeah. start the new paragraph. And then, I know, so I'm not. If I change the line length, then all those spaces show up. Right. I understand that now. I just hadn't seen that it was messed up because I didn't have a chance to look at your. No, no. Well, that's. So now I see, and uh, that's what's being talked about and Brant can fix it. <laughs> or so he said. Yep. Good old Brant. Yep. <laughs> what did you want to do? You, I don't you, mind you... fixing it, but <laughs> if you're doing it this way anyhow. <laughs> It does look like we may leave this to good old Mary instead of good old Brandt to add in the, um, the details of the conditions. Mary, you saw my yeah. note about where to find them in OneDrive. Uh, you emailed me? I did. Okay. I, may have, I think I emailed the entire board. Okay. So this is, we were dealing with 7 North Street, which is the- Hold on a moment. I'm just trying to find you. I'm looking for an email from you. Yeah. Um, and did anyone else get my email? What time did you send it? Oh, what time did I send it? Okay, I've got- 4.43 Here we have, I've got it, four. Uh, yeah, draft minutes from May 25th. Okay, it says in regards to the final conditions yep. approved for the Waitley water pump at 7 North Street, they can be found. Okay, you need to read it, Mary. That's all right. Under addresses. Okay. So, so Brent, can, Brent, can you save this as draft two or something? And then she can work from the one with the corrections accepted? I sure can. Save as, we'll call this um, draft, uh, I'll call it draft, it'll, it'll have draft hyphen two in the name, Mary. So it's there now in the OneDrive folder. It says PB draft dash two minutes for 525. So then you can add the conditions to that. Okay, I will do that. Now that of course assumes that nobody else is making any other changes, which is. So you had a question, Judy, down under part five public hearing, because the road must remain wider for safety. I don't know which yeah. road. And I, I would just take that whole sentence take, out. Take it out. I can't help with that either. That's all my notes said. <laughs> so why don't I just delete it? Just yeah. say the two white pines cannot be saved, period. Uh, I think it was just one white pine. Oh, the knights, the notes said two. There were two trees they wanted to save, and the pine they couldn't, the beach they did. I thought the white pines there were was also a hemlock. The there are two white pines along the road. The also a, uh, there, there was a hemlock and a, a beach and a hemlock and pines or a pine. Okay. Right. The pines were towards the road, the beach and hemlock were farther inland. 
Right. Okay, so say to the two white pines along the driveway cannot be saved. The two white pines along the driveway. Because they had to make the front of that driveway wider for the little bridgey thing. Sight lines. Well, that's called in in the minutes, that's called a hemlock. No, the well, I had it down as there was a hemlock and a beech and two white pines. Oh. Right. And it, it's, pine. a, it's a small point, but it said, what the minutes say, the hemlock was infested with woolly adelgid, and it was there potentially it can be infested. By vulnerable to, vulnerable to. Oh, I thought he yeah. said it was already under attack. That's, 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 that's hemlock. Hemlock. No. Hemlock is under attack. No, yeah. it's not. That one didn't show, I didn't think it showed signs. But. No, no. No, Scott's, <laughs> Scott's, um, the engineer said that, that, that the reason they didn't want to invest in it was because of the potential of it being under attack. Not that it was under attack. Hmm. I'm neutral in this conversation. Oh, I, I, agree with, I agree it, with Tom. It's a small point. It doesn't change the outcome. No. All right. So going. I propose then we, I'll just change it to uh, after the semicolon, instead of it is already under we, I will just change it to it is vulnerable to woolly adult get, get attacked. Correct. I like that. I'm going to do in this draft. I see. So, are there any any other? comments on any of the changes. That's all I can see. You've taken out the note to board, right? I, uh, I'm gonna take out, well. I'll, I'll leave it, Mary can take it out when she does it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, Sorry, you're gonna leave what there? The, there's the, the yellow highlighted note to board Oh, I'll take that out myself. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, and then you'll, because you know now where to find the connection. Right. Okay. So I'm going to do is I'm going to accept all the changes in this current draft two. Um, uh, I'll leave it to you, Mary, as part of your work as you go in and adding in the conditions to then clean up the formatting and indentation stuff. I won't try to yes, do, I'll that do that here and now. I'll, I'll fix all that. Okay, very good. So you'll work off of the draft two minutes that are now in the- um, OneDrive. In the OneDrive, yeah. So are, are we accepting those minutes with subject to the, the changes you just discussed? Uh, subject to the addition of the conditions. That's right. If you if you move it, Tom. So moved. What a motion. I second that motion. Mary, did you get all that? So for May 25th, the board has approved the minutes subject to the changes that I'll be having to make from Brent's information that he saved in OneDrive. Correct. Okay. And in addition to attaching the conditions. Yes. Oh, yeah. The Formatting and the addition of the conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, roll call vote. Sarah. Yes. Don, I. Tom. Yes. Brant. Yes. Judy. Yes. Okay. Motion to accept the May 25th minutes as amended and will be amended as 
Yeah. So, but there, as of right now, there's still draft. Am I correct? Yeah. Of course, it's approved. I mean, we've approved them contingent. So when Mary finishes it, we don't have to do this again, but she'll just mark it approved and, and, and change the filing. Yeah. Yeah. Works for me. All right. So that's done and approved. Do I have anything else open here? That's all I've got. Is that right? Thanks. So. For minutes, yes. Okay. So um, the land over on um, Long Plain Road, does they want to put? Can we do floodplain bylaw first? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't have that up. Yeah. While you're doing that, I can report on my meeting with the Ag Commission, I went and talked to them about the the uh, resource replacement fee that we established for the solar bylaw because they hadn't appointed their delegate to the committee yet. They appointed George Owens. Um, Brian sent out an email saying, need to leave it up to, so that, that means that the group is no, it was George Owens from, is from CONCOM. John Devine is from AG. I'm the planning board person and Joyce is the select board person. And he, Brian's welcomed us all to the committee and said, you guys work out when you wanna meet. And nothing happened for two days. <laughs> and so I finally said, well, I'm going to the Cape on the, second and I'll be away for 10 days, but I'm pretty well available before then. And I prefer Zoom meetings, but I can do in person. And, um, and other people sl slowly started to get back, but it, it became evident we were gonna need a doodle poll or something like that. And so I asked Joyce if she would do it because her schedule is the most complex and the most constrained. And of course she was on vacation. So I have to nudge her again because she's back, but nothing has happened about setting up a meeting, but we have the members. Um, one thing that um, that's good about the delay was that one of the paper, one of the articles in the Gazette about uh, development in Hadley mentioned transfer of development rights and uh, for those of you who don't know, Hadley has a system whereby if you build a box store or something big along Route 9 um, or, or do some things that you can get extra land or something, if you then contribute what they call transfer development rights, contribute to a fund to purchase conservation commissions or land somewhere else in town. And this is the main way they've funded their APRs and some conservation restrictions on, on Mount Holyoke. Kind of like buying energy credits? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's sort of the same thing we're trying with the resource replacement fee. So I, I thought, aha, I'll find out how they set the price on the development rights. So that's, that's one positive from waiting. Uh, the other thing we talked about was the floodplain overlay district. They were they were very interested. They, despite the fact that it was August and they hadn't met in six months or something, they um, they were pleased to hear about it. Well, not they were happy to know that it to be educated about it, not having have it sprung on sprung on them. They certainly weren't pleased. Uh, they got into very pragmatic kinds of questions that we've we've been floating above. Things like, well, this is, does this apply to maintenance? Um, do you think we could come up with a list of things that are inoffensive activities? They're inoffensive, maybe slightly more obtrusive really obtrusive to help the filing, speed up the filing process. 
this one doesn't need a review. This one, maybe the floodplain administrator can review. This one, somebody else needs to review, which I thought was a great idea. Um, they had a couple of questions that I couldn't answer about the process. And Margaret Christie is going to talk to Peggy Sloan and Scott Jackson and see if she can get some understanding of the way it will work. And I told her that we, would, we didn't know, I told them we didn't know at that point about the overlap or whether the floodplain bylaw by trumped the ag agricultural exemptions or not. And if we had asked town council that, I noticed that he finessed it. So um, I guess we still don't know that. But last, as of last, middle of last week, um, Peggy had not heard from Margaret and Peggy is on vacation this week and Margaret is leaving on Friday, so for vacation. So I don't think we're gonna be ready to move on this very quickly. Do you Which, think, you think we can do it by uh, the special town meeting? No. Okay, that takes, some of the pressure off there. Well, of course, well, that depends. I know Brian is in zero rush to have a special town meeting. The only, the only thing that uh, is in his way is that the rec commission has applied for, from, for CPA money to expand the ice skating rink. And that has to be done before the ground freezes. But I can I can all actually see a one one item meeting, but I don't think he has anything else right now. So maybe there'll be a January or February meeting. He was Brian was amenable to doing it at special town meeting, as was the Ag Commission. They thought they thought better to keep it separate from all the rest of town meeting. So that's the back background. Okay, for the rest of the board, uh, we decided, I don't know if you followed the changes, but uh, it was decided that the town administrator actually be the FUD plan administrator, but he said then, or their designee. So that means- Well, we decided, it was decided the assistant administrator, actually. Uh, they, they hadn't decided that the last time I knew anything. Well, that's because we didn't have a title, but we do now. Oh, well, well that's easy. That's easy to fix, I think. Yeah, so what, um, it might be the assistant, but in some cases, Scott might be the, the right person to, to uh, be the designee. Yeah, well, I think, I think adding designee is fine. I'm not sure about the, the title. Well, the title is going to be with, with Scott, with, uh, Brian, and then, and then, or his designee. Okay. I note that the town council is actually recommending for the removal of the or their designee phrase. Well, I don't agree with his 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 opinion on that. I think. The, the problems we're going to run into are too varied to, to put one person. It's going to have to be a really flexible position. Well, I thought the position was set up so that the floodplain administrator referred it to the appropriate board. Well, you can talk to, to Brian about it, but that's what his opinion yeah. is. Maybe we should step back. My sense reading this was that most of these changes are one that most of them are changes to, to the template wording that the Department of DER sent. And I'm not sure, I'd be interested in Peggy's comments and maybe the DER is before we go too far. Something like that 
is is an exception though. Okay. Uh, do you want to just sideline this until? Uh, well, I had one one comment I was going to make independent. I don't know if people, if you want to run through them, fine. But a lot of it was just uh, fine tuning legalese. There's one place where I was going to raise an issue independently of town council's comments on page four, um, item I. And this is something that Peggy added at our request. It says that all development proposals, subdivision and development proposals for, proper, for property in the floodplain will be reviewed by the planning board. And I think when it was suggested by us we meant that the normal kinds of things that we would do under site plan review, is, is that right? That was my understanding. Because the way development is defined in the floodplain bylaw is that it includes things like fences and um, storage of materials, almost anything any activity in the floodplain bylaw is development. So, so I was thinking maybe that that part I needed some qualification to make sure we weren't having to review every fence that went up. So maybe a, uh, a new, a new uh, definition of development? Well, we can't change the development Development as defined in the floodplain bylaw is straight, is straight female wording, I think. Um, we could qualify it. I, I could send it back to Peggy and say, we're really talking about site plan review stuff. Can you suggest some wording that would get us out of it? That sounds like a good idea. I am a little confused about what has just transpired. I'm looking at section I here, and it seems to suggest that the planning board has to do a, a review that specifically addresses three points here as identified in the bylaw, which it looks like you could summarize as minimizing flood damage, dealing with public utilities and facilities and adequate drainage. So, so Judy, could you help me understand what it is you're saying needs to be changed about section I? In the first line, it says subdivision proposals and development proposals. Okay. And then if you go to the definition section in this bylaw. Yep, yep. And which, yeah, way my down. copy of development page, page is six. In, yeah, Q. Any man-made change to improved or unimproved real estate, including but not limited to yeah. dredging, filling, grading, paving, right. storage of equipment or materials. Mm -hmm. I mean, things that we would never normally look at with a site, I mean, site plan review. Right. And then I don't, which is one thing that this whole bylaw is intended to do is see that somebody does look at them. Right. And so, it, and are you saying we should still continue not to look at that? And yes, somebody else. So, and who would that be that would look at that? Well, that's what the whole rest of this process is. I think the Conservation Commission, basically. Well, also we could do what we did with the uh, Pine Plains and and uh, get an engineer to uh, take a look at it. Yeah, but we don't. Do we really want to review every time somebody puts a fence up? No, but if that's when it says the way that this is worded, we have to. I see. So that what you're saying is the word development is so broad, the definition of development could include, yeah, any man-made change. So putting up a fence, digging a hole, anything yeah. done by people. Um. I mean, I don't really think this is necessary because I, I, I know it was added because we want it to be, mm. but 
I mean, I think what we intended was that the we'd make sure that normal site plan review on anything in the floodplain overlay district really looked at these things. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's all we need to say. Hmm. It, it was your suggestion, Don, but I think that was, was what it was. When we do review something, we would review it in a way that takes account of the floodplain bylaw district. Is that? Yes. Is that, was that your sense? Yeah. And, and well, let me try and propose some wording that says that. Mm -hmm. Because right now I don't think quite think it does. It does, it says it in the way we think about development in all the rest of the zoning bylaws, but it doesn't say that for the floodplain bylaw because it has that special definition. Would you read this significantly enlarge our jurisdiction? Then? Is that correct? The way it's worded now. Yeah, the way it's. I think we've got enough on our plate. Yeah, I agree. And I think if we run into a problem, we can go ahead and hire an engineer and charge it to the developer. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking about how we do it, it's about what we do. Right, so we'll look at it and if we see a problem, then we do what we need to do. Well, I don't think we should look at it. I think the whole intent of this bylaw is to create a process for reviewing things that normally aren't reviewed and to establish a procedure for doing that. And I think that by and large, you folks had worked out that the Conservation Commission was doing it. I'm quite happy. I don't really think we should be expanding our purview to look at new things. I'm quite happy to be more, to scrutinize more carefully the things that we normally look at that happen in these areas. Okay, so then the way we might handle it would be to say approved, but this piece must go be approved by the uh, the CONCOM. Well, no, I, if you go back, I'm just we're looking at this out of context. If you go back and look at all the other paragraphs that get here, there's a process for dealing that with all that other stuff. Judy, why don't you, if you're willing, you provide some language? I will. I'd be happy to. Okay. This is going to be overwhelming for anyone, isn't it? Going, yeah. did you dig a hole down by the floodplain? I mean, yeah. How, yeah. how is this being enforced and who's catching all this? Well, that's, that's, that, I mean, it's, you know, the questions that the Ag Commission had, uh, how deep a hole is disturbance? Um, if I move my irrigation pump, is that a problem? Um, and that's why I sent them to talk to Scott and Peggy. And I- It's a lot for CONCOM too. I mean, it's it's a lot. I, am, I very much think we need to protect and the, the possibility of waste getting into I mean, it's an area that needs to be protected for all of our, wow, it's a, anyway, you all, you certainly know that, Judy, if looking at this, anyway. Yeah, well, you know, Scott, I think, except for things like the, well, I don't know, it was interesting at the Ag Commission because you know, they if, if they were building a barn, they would certainly worry about where the floodplain is. And, but thinking about things like uh, storage of equipment and Jim Galaga said, well, I keep a lot of fuel in a shed down by the river. And, you know, I try and get it out when I know the river is gonna rise, but, and so some of this is probably good anyway. Yeah. but. I, anyway, I, that's why I think that it's not going to happen fast because there's a lot of that kind of stuff that they need to work out. And I am willing to bet that the DER has never thought about any of it. I'm going to sort of echo Sarah's comments with a 
different line of attack here. First, correct me if I'm wrong. When it comes to town meeting, an eventual town meeting where this floodplain bylaw is put up for a vote, we, the planning board, are seen as the primary, let's say, sponsor of this new bylaw. Am I correct? I mean, we can't yeah. pass the buck and I just. Right. I'm sorry. Right. So, am I right about that? It's it's got well, to pass muster with us. It has to pass muster with us. But if you remember what Nicholas did with the amendments he made to the water district, yeah. the aquifer overlay last time, you know, essentially those were required by the state. They just hadn't been done before. Okay. We and the reason that we if if we take this to a special town meeting, the reason we can do that is because we don't really have a lot of choice. We have to have this to have flood insurance. Yeah. So if we quote sponsor it, I think we're doing our best to say, look, the state requires this. We've done our best to adapt it to Waitley. We've worked to make it as practical as possible. We and FERCOG and the CONCOM, and the Ag Commission have worked to make it as hard as this. But when push comes to shove, we have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we will also have, I think, or the other thing is next steps. We're gonna have to have a lot of education. And so I think what would normally be a public hearing, you call a public meeting and you, you encourage a lot of different people to come and maybe you get the Ag Commission to talk about what they've done and that kind of yeah. thing too. Um, well, and that's I mean, again, why it's not gonna happen quickly. Yeah, yeah. well, on that point, I'm, even, you know, I've read through this multiple times and I'm struggling with even answering for myself basic questions of like, if I owned property in, the flood in the floodplain overlay district, how is this really going to impact me? And if the work, if the expectation of a public meeting or educational sessions is, well, you've all just got to read the bylaws. That's not well, going to fly. Yeah. I think the problem, one problem is that a lot of what's help, going to help it make sense to people comes in these permitting lists and things that aren't there yet. I mean, what we have is the boilerplate, but not the practical stuff. And it's when you see the practical stuff. Right. And in addition to that, if the Ag Commission can come up with their list of things like, these, these should be automatic approval. These may need a little defense put in front of the flood train administrator. These will have to go to the CONCOM or mm -hmm. if it's a site plan approval, you would take it to us anyway kind of mm -hmm. thing, um, that will help too. So every everyone who lives or has property in a floodplain district is gonna, oh, nice tail, <laughs> um, is going to need to know in simple language, like if, you know, under what conditions are they going to need to either seek approval or be at risk of something. Yeah. Some of it is kind of common sense. If, if the flood, these are 1979 floodplain maps. Yeah. They probably flood. You probably get what they thought was a hundred year flood once a year these days. I don't know, but yeah. that's yeah. like maybe an exaggeration, but it's when we get the updated maps that might be yeah. a little different. But is it obvious to you, Judy, just from reading this, like what would an, an existing property owner now have to do that they didn't have to do before? Well, it depends on how they define things like maintenance, but I know my neighbors, the Scots, have a bridge over the river, a wooden bridge that they use to get their tractor over to hay the other side. Periodically, that has to be repaired. I think they would normally have just gone ahead and fixed it. I'm not sure they can do that now. Maybe, maybe if it doesn't change in dimensions, 
it's that kind of thing. I know the snowmobile club's been having real problems maintaining their bridges over recreation land and in the Great Swamp. Yeah, well, that's because in order to, yeah, they, they have to file the full engineering thing. That's that's yeah. federal that's federal safety requirements. It's the same. <laughs> if you know anybody who's upset about that, I've been trying for 10 years to get them to apply for CPA money to pay for the engineering study. Bob Savola, I will tell him. He's the head of the Waitley. I see him regular. He's in chemistry. It's a, it's a very eligible project. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Bob would love to hear that. It feels like there would be a, a need for clearly not an exhaustive list, but a set of kind of scenarios, like common scenarios that might yeah. come up in, in the floodplain district and, you know, a kind of then versus now ex simple explanation. Like in the old days, you just fixed the darn bridge, but now you're going to need to do yeah. X, Y, Well, I see a look at the map, 95% of this is farmland. Okay. Um, the other problem area is probably the campground. Um, I don't think the typical homeowner is going to have much involved here. Okay. I mean, you might take a look at Don's. Don really improved that map, by the way. The color change made a huge difference. But you might just take a look at it and look where the, not now necessarily, but sometimes. So this that's why I think map. getting the Ag Commission involved is really good because they, I wouldn't have thought about moving an irrigation pump or how deep do the anchors for the irrigation pipes have to go mm -hmm. before it's disturbance. Don, could you just, regarding the flood map, um, this is the PDF that's in the folder, flood map Waitley. This yep. is your improved version. Yep. And so am I correct in the, the sort of the light green are the floodplain areas? The dark blue. Oh, the dark blue. There should be a legend on the right-hand side of that map. Legend on the right-hand side of the map. Why am I not seeing a legend? There should be a list of... Okay. Like a scale bar and and there should be a, a light blue box saying this is a floodplain zone. Can you share it, Don? Yeah, I'm not seeing that. Unless it's I'm looking at the wrong document then in the uh, in the OneDrive folder. Uh, let me pull up my version then. I don't know, unless other people are somehow seeing what I'm not seeing. I see a map, but flood map Waitley, but I don't know what, you know, how old it is or whether it's the revised version or not. Maybe I'm not looking at what's maybe done as a version that's not in one draft. Yeah, I've got that. Uh... I think he sent it out to everybody. Well, maybe not. The final, final. You called it, I think. Okay. I'm just pulling it up off my file. Yeah. Okay. Um, he got it for me after the Ag Commission complained that they couldn't read the old the first okay. draft he had. All right, so, so this is an improved version of an old flood map. Is that correct? No, it's a it's the the new town zoning map with the zoning removed and a floodplain added. Ah, okay. All right, so you're going to share your version so we can see it, and then also maybe drop it at some point into the OneDrive folder. Okay, can we see that? Yes, so that's definitely looked different than what I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. So the legend is on the right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, they, and I had it kind of a lighter blue, and so uh, it, the problem was it was hard to tell the lighter blue from the waterways. 
Yeah, so if you look at the Connecticut River, you can definitely see the difference. Mm -hmm. We stopped at the town line. And what's strange is that the lower reservoir out in West Waitley is considered a flood zone. The upper is. Well, that's because it's vulnerable to the dam breaking. Ah. You th we just thought I'd known that, wouldn't you? Well, that's because I'm in the zone that's vulnerable to the <laughs> South Deerfield dam breaking. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Any, any questions on that? Right. There's no way in the, you know, in the, the um, assessor's map, the online tool that I look at to look at parcels to see that overlay. I mean, yes, there will be, but there we, will be. We can't put it in until next May or something like that. First of the year, I think. Okay. Well, also, I wouldn't put it in until it's voted. What's that? Yeah, you can't put it in until it's voted. <laughs> Or you shouldn't. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, we should probably do that then. Well, but you're saying, Judy, that there is no chance of any property owner being surprised by this map. Like, oh, I didn't know that I was in that zone. Well, I happen to live along the Mill River, so I can tell you nobody along the Mill River is going to be surprised. That, okay, but I don't know about, and they're pretty, pretty obvious. But you know, as I say, this thing is what forty years old. Yeah. I mean, should we be somehow proactively reaching out to those who might be affected? I don't know. Short. I don't know. I, we will. We will. We're not there yet. Okay. All right. I mean, that's the problem. We don't have the examples. We don't yeah. have wording. We don't have a clear process. We're, yeah. <laughs> we don't have names, titles. We we have appear to have a what I what looks to me like a battle between town council and DER. I mean, I, the oh, the wording well, ninety percent of the wording you wanted to change was wording in the template. Okay. Okay, well, the last thing on the agenda is So we're moving on off of where we're just letting yeah, the I, whole floodplain discussion drain, drain away. <laughs> I will send this to Peggy, town council's comments. And, and she, as I say, she's on vacation this week. And and try and draft the language on that site plan review section that was issue we talked about. I don't think there's anything else we can do till Peggy and the Ag Commission and Scott get together. Mm -hmm. And once they do, then I think we can start to have some of those examples. Okay, then we'll move on. So nothing to vote there, nothing to, sort of an impasse waiting. Mm -hmm. Good. So Dawn, you wanted to introduce us to more solar panels? Yep. Um, the uh, final thing is um, the, we talked about across from uh, where the big farm ag is down on uh, Long Plain Road. Yeah, yep. They want to put in solar. And right now, our bylaw says uh, 100 foot setback. And they don't, don't have enough acreage in there to make it worth their while unless they can get a 50 foot setback. And I explained to them that in that situation, we do not like to change rules just to make something work for somebody. Right. Uh, and that the, so then they wanted to get a, an exemption. And I said, Dave, I've been in town a long time. And I've never, 
heard of anybody getting an exception. There may have happened, but I didn't know about it. And that, you know, Roger and crew will look at something. If it makes sense, uh, they will waive it and they have the ability to waive it. And uh, evidently they've got this thing so close that they don't feel that they can take the chance on not getting uh, the full approval before they go. So they suggested that I suggest that in the commercial industrial and industrial zones that we change the bylaw to 50 foot setback. Universal. I suggested the commercial, but I, I will not even consider that because we've got all that commercial land down along Route 5. Yeah. Well, whether we do this or not, I'm very uncomfortable telling them anything without a vote at town meeting. And I don't think we should because the setbacks were increased specifically at the public's request and one of them were one of the main things that they wanted. Yep. Yeah, my my and, trouble with these, I'm sorry, Judy. Well, no. My, 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 my trouble with these is what if someone comes in and they want a 25 foot setback? Then somebody comes in and wants a 150 foot setback. Are we changing this every time somebody makes a request? No, this was a request based on the probability they feel. And I don't know that I agree with that, but I understand their position. Well, when they met with us, they asked if we would consider taking that to town meeting as a, as a zoning change. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Excuse me a minute, but who are the people we're talking about? I, I'd rather, I think maybe we shouldn't. Well, oh, okay. I'm with Judy on this is, we're just discussing setback. We're discussing this in the abstract. Okay, okay. Yeah. setback discussion, yeah, okay. <laughs> Could somebody, without derailing this piece, for my benefit, like, what's the point of a setback in general, regardless of the amount? What are we trying to accomplish by establishing a setback? Well, presumably so that people don't have to look at it. Okay. In the situation where we're looking at, and in much of the uh, commercial industrial zone, and potentially the industrial zone, uh, we've already got either trees there or industrial buildings. And I don't think seeing a solar, what we, we're not calling farms anymore, but a solar facility yeah. uh, is, is all that problem. Well, hold on. But if we're having this discussion in the abstract and we're thinking of a change to setbacks that would apply to all properties in the commercial industrial zone, then we're presumably, if we have a hundred foot setback and we're thinking of reducing it to 50, then we would then in effect be allowing anyone who's currently respected the hundred foot setback to now expand by another 50 feet. Yep. If they're in the commercial industrial zone, I exactly. don't think that there actually are any of those, but. There is a, a lot in, in the area that they're in a commercial industrial. No, so, he's, he says an existing facility. Yeah. He's thinking about if uh, one, of the, one of the ones on, Long, on Christian Lane wanted to expand, but I don't think any of them would be affected. Those are all agres. The only I way it, I think we could possibly do this, and I don't know whether it's a good idea or not, is if we say that this reduced setback would only apply when the property line is not adjacent to an active residential use, not necessarily to something that's zoned ag res, but where there's actually somebody living there or looking at it or with property that where there is a house that overlooks it. Right, so they're up against, they're up against the cemetery to the south. Well, you're making it specific again, right. Doug. I know, but I'm just telling you what their situation is though. Yeah. They, they've got the cemetery to the south and a neighbor who doesn't care to the north and across the street, 
is, is uh, well the neighbor who doesn't care to the north would well it's, it's not always southern, gonna be it's that the name. southern boundary they right. want to it's the southern boundary they care about. They don't care about the north. Those people on the south don't care. Yeah. They're all dead. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I got family there. Six. That's a hero you do. Quiet neighbors. <laughs> They're very quiet. What my, grandf my grandfather used to say. Well, my father used to say, see that cemetery? People are dying to get in there. And we grew up every time he said it. Well, I Personally, I think the only way to approach this, I think you have to set aside the question of what these particular people want. I think that's clouding our judgment in this circumstance. That, it, that if, if, we, if we think we've found, found a case that leads us to reconsider the question of setbacks, then let's focus on that. What's the right setback and under what circumstances? I could imagine that, yes, that within a, I, I liked where Judy was going, right? You might be able to say that in general, in a commercial industrial district, I don't mind if there are factories packed in close together. Why do I need to enforce 100 foot setbacks between factory A and factory B? But between factory A and a house, <laughs> um, I don't care whether that particular house today is occupied by somebody who doesn't care. I want to protect future owners of that property and not have that property degraded by now there's a factory 50 feet away. So I guess what I'm saying is what's the general, like if we think that a hundred foot setback is too extreme in general, under what circumstances is a 50 foot setback acceptable? If, if the setback or the, the land from the road to the edge of the setback is all wooded, then it becomes a moot point. I, I would disagree that the Visibility is the only criteria here. Um, I think that's the key one, but I think there's a lot of concern about safety and fire. Safety, noise. Um, um, noise noise for these fields is, is below. Again, I'm not thinking about this from a solar perspective. Oh, this is only for the solar bylaw. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so there, then I then I've lost track of that in key detail, that yes. this is going to be a change strictly to the solar bylaw for setbacks. So obviously I need to look more deeply into the solar bylaw. Well, we, we already established, the solar bylaw already has unique setbacks different from standard. Okay. Um, and when it was last revised, which was only a year ago, we increased them. Okay. And that's one reason it's a little awkward to go and now say, oops. So, so there's that issue. And we increased them because of pro public pressure to do so. Okay. And some of this is because of inadequate screening. And we also, at the time, increased the screening requirements. So I think you know, which, which, and they now are quite wide. Um, so, but if we do, we, we, we take a proposal to town meeting and vote it. And, and I think it should apply to all commercial industrial and we should design it for that. And I guess what the other one is Yankee, Yankee Candle. Are they putting one up? Are they what? Yankee Candle putting up solar? No, but the bylaw would apply to that lot, wouldn't it? You're, you're thinking about it in terms of the people again, Don. Think about it in terms of the lots and where it could be. Yeah. Well, you've confused me again, Judy. See, because... the, they've only asked for, for in the commercial industrial zone. And the only 
What is what is Yankee Candle zoned? What's that? What is Yankee Candle zoning? Uh, commercial, I think. Well, I think we what we need to do is go and look, spend some time looking at a map and look at all the lots to which it would apply, and then think about what reasonable setbacks would be for those lots. Okay, so there are two lots in Waitley that are in commercial industrial. One is to the north of the Polish Cemetery, and the other one is to the south of the um, the industrial park. There's a little thing that sticks out next to the town offices. Hold on, I'll, I'll bring that up. Again, not to derail this, but if, is there a place in the solar bylaw now that I'm sorry, I'll open up the bylaw, like where you're thinking of a change in wording on setbacks? It's under the site plan review. Site, site plan review. Yeah. For solar site plan review. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don, just out of curiosity, why are we discussing this now if we can't do anything till April or June? Because I told them that I would discuss it. Okay. I see. Um, so in section, section G, dimension side and size and height requirements in the solar bylaw, there is a subpart one setbacks which sets front yard, side yard, and rear yard all to not less than a hundred feet. And so this is the one place in the bylaw that we are, this whole conversation is about changing one or more of those numbers in part G subsection one, am I correct? And was mm -hmm. Judy trying to say, no, let's try to take this outside the solar bylaw and make this applicable to all commercial industrial zones? No, I was you trying to say that if we, if we do this and we change it for commercial industrial, we have to understand that we are impacting more lots than just the one for the people who came to talk to us. Okay. And that we should really think about where those are and what we're doing. And I guess we should also think about well, I don't are we doing it to all the I mean, they requested one side lot thing for their circumstance, but it presumably if it applies to a side lot, it side boundary, it might apply to a rear boundary. Maybe a front boundary. Yep. And if, if it's at the solar bylaw, how, how would this impact, for instance, the, the solar projects on Christian Lane? Which they are grandfathered. Project? I mean, it's irrelevant. It's not, they're not in the district. And they're grandfathered. I mean, they exist anyway. And they were built, they were built with a 50 foot setback. No, I mean, anyway. if, you were, if you were to model it, you'd do it, if you were to do it, you'd be able to start again. How, how would this setback change? Because then you, you've got residential and agriculture in those areas. But they, it would only apply to the commercial. The proposal is to have it apply to the commercial industrial district. So within the, within the, the solar bylaw. Yeah. So your that part is a bit of a mystery to me because right now there's nothing that I see in the solar bylaw and I apologize for not having it, you know, deeply internalized, but I don't see anything in the solar bylaw that is conditional based on zoning, like whether the zone, whether the solar facility is in commercial industrial versus somewhere else. Am I, where, am I missing that's, something? That's correct now. I see. There, there so then, is a precedent, <laughs> there is a precedent for affecting one, one zoning area differently than others. And for marijuana retail facilities only, we allowed a shorter setback for rear property lines 
in commercial districts because it became quite evident that we weren't, none of the commercial properties had, had lots deep enough to work with a longer one. Okay, so let so, me see if I can paraphrase what I think is being sketched out here. So right now in the existing solar bylaw, as I said, under dimension, size and height, the setbacks are fixed regardless of the zone in which the solar facility is being constructed. That's the way the bylaw is written today. So Judy, you seem to be suggesting that were we to do something along the lines that Don has been proposing, we would actually fairly, well, we would revise part G sub part, subsection one to add conditional language. Like it might be along the lines of, basically the default is that setbacks are hundred feet, but under these specific conditions in this specific zone, the setbacks can be only 50 feet. I think it can be shorter than that. The if you look at the marijuana one, it would say something like, except that in the commercial industrial district, the side setback maybe is 50 feet, uh, shall be not less than 50 feet, as long as there's no active residential use adjacent to it or something like that. Okay, I'm looking at that. But you see, I, I, I accept the idea that there's a precedent for what we're talking about. Well, I, I'm not sure that's the only one. I I just happen to know, it's it's not it's not unusual. So I misspoke. Uh, uh, the uh, Yankee Candle is commercial industrial. And now we have three spots up here. So, but this across from. Yankee Candle, that's too small to put in anything. This one's definitely too small. Well, we also have to think that things might be rezoned in the future. Yeah. I mean, it, it, these things tend, when you do rezoning, you don't go back and check the whole, I mean, we've just done a bunch. You don't go back and check every bylaw to see what, what you're affecting. Yep. So I think you want to think about what makes sense in the abstract. Yep. And, you know, I'm presenting this on their behalf and I'm not convinced that we should do it. So, but I think we've, we're pretty much all thinking about the same thing. Is that a straw poll? Anybody really interested in pushing this any further? Well, we could kick it down the road. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't. How do I put this? I mean, I'm not. I'm not inclined. I'm not inclined to just say, let's forget this. I would be open to another more focused conversation. Tonight, I feel like at least for me personally, we've made some progress. Like I know where in the bylaw, the specific place in the bylaw we're talking about making a change. I would propose then that the next iteration, maybe we throw this back on um, these people, Don, I'll just call them these people, um, to say, go into, you know, look on this, in this part of the solar bylaw and offer to the planning board your proposed language, or at least the concept that you would I, like us to. I'd, I'd rather keep control of the discussion. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean this is our, they don't do this yeah. for a living. We do. Well, that's true. We do it for a non-living. That's yeah, that's, <laughs> what, what, what is, other than these individuals, what is the community town-wide driver for having this conversation? Well, do we believe if these people that, if these people didn't bring this up? Yeah. Are there other we people would, or constituents around town who we would point to and say, 
yes, there, there seems to be a town-wide desire for this. And what are the best practices that can be applied mm -hmm. to a comprehensive review of this? And I, I'm not getting that sense. I think the reason we're having this conversation is because yeah. the individual has a piece of property that doesn't conform under the existing bylaw and they want to change it to have it exist. That's good for them, but is that a, is that a driver for town The, the irony, I'm sorry, to, the oh. irony here is that <laughs> the uh, John Baronis, we proposed, we wanted to get more commercial business in town, we proposed rezoning that because it's adjacent, it's near the industrial park, it's near 116, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's not surrounded by land, it's a very good place for commercial industrial development. And he was all for it. And now he's unhappy because it doesn't, well, I guess it wouldn't have qualified under the old one anyway, but, but that lot is eminently developable developable for all sorts of stuff. And uh, and we don't have many like that. So to have it go to, I mean, it's it's nice that it's not taking farmland if you had solar there, but it is taking a place where there could be a factory or, a, or another commercial property. So, so like everything else with zoning and planning board decisions, it's never, an easy answer. It's a really I'd like to talk to Brian about this and get his advice. Well, the only, to answer Tom's question, the only plus for the town is that when we started this whole solar thing, we felt that solar is a good thing. And, uh, you know, it's just, I've seen solar up and down the valley and we're the only ones that really seem to want to hide it. Because you got one sixteen, 16, you got it right next to the elementary school. And then further down, you've got it near the, uh, the garage down there across from where the uh, fish farm used to be. Mm -hmm. I'd lot rather see a factory building there with solar on the roof. I'll tell no, them. That. That, 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 I don't want to misunderstood that I'm opposed to solar development. Uh, what, what I'm my, what my expert concern is that the, the, the motivation for this entity, um, yeah. whether whether it's residential agriculture that, as opposed to a community wide best practice based comprehensive review, it's being very specifically driven by an individual, whether it's solar, agriculture, or, or whatever. Um, what's the driver? Yeah. So I, I'm yeah. fully in support of solar. Yeah, I'm kind of with Tom. We spent, a, we spent a lot of time thinking about the solar bylaws and, and brought them back. And we had a lot of conversation and debate about it. There was um, part constituents on all sides of the issue and we wove our way through it. And it wasn't a simple process, but it was a very productive process. It's very different than the driver that I'm hearing right now where an individual can't make parcel A fit of idea B and make it work, so we're going to change the bylaw. That's a different driver. I agree. I'm very, very in favor of solar, but I, and not that we, I'd like to see it, like it was mentioned, very much on the top of every commercial new building going in, but we need more commercial buildings also, commercial businesses. Yeah. To create jobs, not just use up space and generate electricity. They are well, very passive. Drivers, very you want good. You I think I think the answer you give, based on the sense that I get from the board, the answer you give them is that we discussed it and we felt that the pressure from the town to expand the setbacks was such that we were not comfortable taking a setback reduction to town meeting this soon, even for a particular property type. And that's where I am anyway. Yeah, but I think that's a that's a, a very fair yeah, argument. Yeah, that we yes. only have a small amount of that particular type makes it even worse. Yeah. I'll put one offer on the table. 
and this is mindful of the fact that in the past when I proposed this, Judy has schooled me on how Waitley is so far ahead of the curve that we don't need to do this. But here's the thing. I will look at other solar bylaws and other towns, you know, coming from an academic background. We look at, you know, prior art, other, you know, precedent around the state. Maybe Waitley is all, always thinking more deeply and more further ahead than every other community in the Commonwealth. But let me at least try to look at setbacks in other solar bylaws to the extent that I can find them. And I will report back to the board on what my findings are by our next meeting. And okay. you can maybe tell these, your people that we're at least looking at, I mean, either we can take the position that Judy has just articulated, which I could live with, or we can say we're still like looking at the issue, the general issue of setbacks associated with solar facilities across the state. Well, if you read the recorder, you'll find that there are a number of towns around wanting to put solar moratoriums in. Yeah. So. I, think, I actually think that might be more relevant in this case than most of our solar discussions. Most other towns have I don't mean the moratoriums, I mean checking. Most other towns have uh, solar overlay districts okay. where you can just build them in particular areas. And they, I think, are generally designed to be less obtrusive in less obtrusive parts of town. And maybe with the maybe that's relevant to commercial industrial more than just our normal. might have some merit. Brant, I don't mind you looking, but one thing to keep in mind is that we, we are more rural than the majority of the state, right. if you're looking at Eastern Mass stuff yeah. and our setbacks, and we're used to having larger spaces. Yeah, I think I would focus on just like Franklin County, maybe Berkshire County. Yep. Maybe, I don't know, I mean, basically, I would only look as far as the Western Massachusetts County. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah cause Eastern Mass is a whole different world. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't look at big city, you know, Greenfield and Springfield and, right. All right, if there, we have nothing else to discuss, I would motion, uh, suggest we have a motion to adjourn. Brant, you want to stay on with me? I fiddled around a little bit, but okay. um, yeah, I'll stay on. Okay, Good. thank you all. Yeah, so second. Oh, and I will motion to adjourn since the chair has <laughs> called for somebody to do that. I'll second it. What the heck? Uh, can you do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Judy, yes. yes. This meeting is adjourned by acclamation. Hey, Sean. All right. Hey there, Sarah. I'm I'm hanging. Have a good okay. evening. Night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Okay. So yeah, why don't you share your screen and log in to Zoom in your browser? I have in a variety of different ways, and I've now lost it. So let me make one thing big and one thing small. Oh, she's doing that, Brad. Yeah. Uh, can Post you attendees. give Amy the um, login to um, OneDrive? Yeah. Sure, sure. I can I can work with Amy on getting her connected. Because um, it's the planning board email. Like no, no, this, this would be so that she can get into our. Uh, and I know exactly what you're talking about. So that we can just let her know that uh, minutes are in there. Maybe what I'll do since she's working at town, town offices, I'll set up a time to go visit her and w walk her through it. Okay. She's young, so she should be like quick at it. Come on. All right, so let's see. Um, I oh. want to go back in and make sure we're not recording anymore. Yeah, recording? Yeah, end the, end the meeting. 
So let's see, if you go to... Okay, I'm gonna stop share so I can see my full screen. Right. Okay, goodbye recording.